Hi everyone, Magnus Tour of Team Microsoft here. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the improvements we have made on the HTTP long polling uh, or the fallback um, APIs of XSockets that enables you to use our JS API and the WebSocket server on non WebSockets capable browsers such as old IE versions or browsers that have has um, WebSockets disabled. Um, I will start by opening up uh, Visual Studio. Uh, first of all, I already got the server running. Uh, the development server of XSockets. Um, this is a simple web page, uh, default HTM. Uh, and um, we also have the XSockets controller, which is the fallback uh, MVC3 controller that enables the fallback uh, using HTTP uh, together with the um, Windows implementation of um, uh, the WebSockets protocol. Um, it's called uh, XSockets External. Uh, that's a uh, library that enables you to do WebSocket communication using um, our external API from your uh, C-Sharp applications, WPF, um, WinForms, etc. Uh, we are using this uh, API or external library uh, within the controller. Uh, so the communication from the client in the HTTP fallback is done by using AJAX and the control itself uses uh, WebSockets to communicate with the XSocket server, um, as I explained in an old demonstration of the, the API. Uh, first of all, uh, I have created a simple web page uh, containing a theme tag named ball. And we also have a style tag here, or some styles, styling of this, this element, giving it a background color and a width and height and position. And we also have uh, uh, the reference to XSockets uh, JavaScript API together with um, jQuery. Uh, as you see here in document ready, I will say that uh, create a new instance of a WebSocket and the handler called generic text. And when we have a established connection or an open event fired by the API, we will bind yet another subscriber or event listener. In this case, we are listening to a event called square ball move, which will give us uh, some data back. And when this data is received, uh, I will just select the, the ball, uh, the div tag uh, just below and set some properties of this element, the left and top uh, position and of, of, of the object. And then I bind a mouse move event listener for the document that says given event. And we create a JSON object called position and put the X and Y coordinates of the, the mouse pointer into this object. And we say trigger, which is the publisher uh, this will send a object named square ball move and pass the data into the to the listener. Uh, so let's have a look look at this. Uh, so I will just close this and do a reload. You can see there I'm moving the uh, the ball in Chrome. We can have a look at the the data we are sending. Uh, let's have a look here and on the network and generic text which is the handler we can see that we have a bunch of frames sent to the to the to the server uh, let's go back to the to the web page and open up um, yet another browser window that we see here uh, this is running uh, sorry this is running inside uh, Google Chrome 20 let's open up Canary uh, pull this window to the, to the right and this one to the left uh, the left window here where you can see the mouse pointer is the old version of chrome or uh, chrome 20 this is chrome 22 canary uh, we can also open up uh, safari uh, and open the same web page and see that we have the possibility to, to also use uh, an older version of the protocol it that is moving uh, so let us close this one and close this one down and just do regular chrome version we can also have a look at the server 
status as you see there's just one uh, current connection uh, and we have a bunch of messages sent in and out of the server which has been running four or five minutes uh, so let us have a look at um, if we try to run this uh, in Firefox in this case I have changed the settings of Firefox so that we have about config you can have a look here I have been careful and we have web sockets uh, as you see I'm disabled the web sockets uh, of Chrome or of Firefox uh, and if I copy the URL into Firefox now you will see that the same web page is open nothing happens and that's because of the, the lack of web sockets you can also have a look at um, uh, um, the console <coughs> you will see that it says uh, web socket is no that's because of uh, disa the disabling of the, uh, the API so let us just um, uh, add a new script reference uh, to the um, to the server uh, it's just the X sockets fallback and place it just above uh, X sockets and hit save and go back to this uh, browser then Firefox which says the uh, disabled web sockets uh, API and do a refresh uh, you can see that I'm using um, uh, HTTP long polling is posting the trigger and it also says listen as you see um, it reacts immediately uh, and if I go back to Chrome now we will be able to sorry for that uh, open the same thing controlling the uh, controlling the, the, the squared ball in Firefox so let us also have a test in Explorer uh, where you all know that there is no track of web sockets at all today um, we will see it in I-10 hopefully uh, as, I, as, as far as I know uh, and do a refresh here and we have the same functionality a little bit slower uh, and um, there's maybe some issue here on the Firefox implementation yeah quite messy for my, my, my machine to, to deal, deal with this so let us close uh, this one go back to IE and see how it works so uh, the thing you have to do with the long polling is just to enable uh, or put the fallback script into the into the web page and of course you will need a um, HTTP server of some kind uh, in our case it's uh, IES uh, hosting the MVC3 controller which enables the, the long polling uh, that is pretty much the thing uh, I hope you uh, like what you see uh, and um, this will be shipped with uh, the next version of XSockets uh, have a nice evening and goodbye